This is episode 55. This is the business of architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. This is Enoch Bartlett Sears, and I am happy to welcome everyone back today. This is the show where we talk about business, about running a better firm, and today's show is brought to you by the Business of Architecture Conference, which will be coming to you in early October, where you'll be able to learn everything about starting an architecture firm, marketing a firm, getting more clients, and running an excellent business. Today, I am happy to welcome to the show Lisa Henry. She is a business consultant principal of Greenway Group, and she specializes in helping architecture firms and design firms have better business performance. So, Lisa, welcome to the show. Thanks, Enoch. It's great to be with you. Lisa, just so we can get to know you a little bit better, could you give me uh, just a little bit of background of who you are and what brought you to your current position and your current focus on business consulting? I've always had a business uh, penchant. Uh, my background is in agribusiness management um, initially. Um, I had um, extended experience working um, as a trading analyst for Merrill Lynch. Uh, but my creative side really needed to get out, and um, I uh, pursued a design degree um, in order to make that happen. I knew I wasn't going to make a living as a sculptor, for example, which I love. However, I do know that uh, design is a way to connect to the economy um, and still be able to express myself creatively. Um, and I've had a marvelous career as a design uh, director at a, a workplace strategy group. I had an amazing experience working um, with Knoll for many years as their regional director of architecture and design, um, working, again, mostly on workplace strategy. Uh, but then that business piece just started to emerge uh, once again. I had a, a great business leadership experience as the national president for the American Society of Interior Designers. And that just led me to think I would like to combine these two in a more robust way. Um, I've worked with Jim Kramer at the Greenway Group and Doug Parker there, um, and Bob Fisher, who you've interviewed in the past. And one of the aspects of the work they did that was just fascinating to me is was their work in service to helping firms uh, improve their performance. Um, the components of business are uh, obvious. I view them as design elements and uh, looking at business as a design challenge to me was really part of what the appeal was, and we, we put it together, and I've been with Greenway uh, for a year. And tell me a little bit about what Greenway Group does. Greenway is a business strategy and consulting firm. Their work is focused within the architecture, engineering, and construction realm. I think that specialization is important because the unique aspects of operations, the unique as aspects of marketing, uh, the unique aspects of finance um, that are in leadership that are within uh, those types of firms, um, I, I believe they really benefit by specialized um, consulting and specialized um, uh, consultants who are really aware of what those as unique as aspects are. Um, all of us have some kind of a background in one of the design professions. We all have a um, direct experience in that realm uh, before Greenway. So I think this is an important um, piece uh, that helps us understand that dynamic. Lisa, when you talk about designing a business as a designer would look at a design project, take, for instance, a new building. An architect might consider the programmatic elements, the shape and size of rooms, the way the sun hits the building. What are some of the considerations that go into designing a successful business? Well, we utilize, um, we utilize components um, around marketing, around um, firm operations, around the professional practice 
and around finance that are um, combined in ways that, you know, let's say each one of them is a cylinder in an engine. Uh, these can be viewed as uh, firing at optimal or suboptimal levels. And um, if they're all working together, it's going to be an engine that drives uh, performance in a firm. Uh, but if one of them is not working, of course, you can see that there will be challenges. Um, if a firm doesn't have a robust marketing program, they're not going to be able to get the business in. Um, marketing is about getting the business in. Um, financing is about, you know, how to, um, you know, how to pay for uh the support to consultants for staff for overhead, etc. And if that's not firing on all cylinders, you can see the challenges around that. Um, firm operations is how the work gets done. Um, and operational aspects of, um, of architecture and design firm performance, you can imagine, are critical. Um, project flow, uh, scheduling, um, and so forth, uh, profitability come into play. All of this has to be firing at an optimal level. So when we see um, components of business in these terms, uh, we work with firms and essentially – diagnose where the strengths and weaknesses are and assemble these elements in a way that form a strong foundation for the firm, uh, combining that with strong leadership and um, an identifiable culture. Those are the elements that compose uh, a successful firm uh, performance. Lisa, here on the show, a lot of our listeners belong to smaller firms. Are there any commonalities that you say that you see with smaller firms in terms of the weaknesses that you mentioned when you come in and look at a business? Hmm. Well, primarily, um, not. Uh, this is my experience: is smaller firms tend to be justifiably and understandably really focused on um, immediate getting business in um, and doing the business. Um, the area of neglect that I most commonly see is around lack of strategic planning and sticking to a plan. Um, there are a lot of fires that are going on out in the client world within projects, and they have to be attended to. So that reactive mode of everyday work is something that's a big deal for small firms. They're, they're running around getting, just getting it done um, and not stepping back and taking the time to uh, really strategically identify their markets, what the strengths and weaknesses are within their own staff potentially, uh, where they have to fill in gaps. It's all very on the fly. Uh, yeah, it takes time and it takes a lot of energy to focus on uh, developing strategy and sticking to it. But if that investment is made up front in creating a real plan to identify where you want to go, that is that goes really far in um, in successful. Um, proactive, getting ahead of um, the market and taking the firm in the direction that you really want it to go in the long term and not just, what are we going to get today? Lisa, what are the advantages or benefits of having a strategic plan for an architecture firm? Well, it's like any any plan. Um, you know, when you start out a design, again, we'll go right back to the metaphor of, you know, a design project in a business is you have to start out with a, a plan. And as a firm develops that plan, it determines um, ultimately the, the whole purpose of the firm, the, the direction of the firm, which is really important, um, you know, and that's done through um, its vision, its aspirational vision. Um, a strategic plan also helps identify the goals of the firm. Um, it identifies um, the mission of the firm. And I think that big picture ensures that a uh, firm will spend its resources in a direction um, that will yield a, a, the greatest return, that they won't have um, – it's important that the, the reactive – 
doesn't um, supersede the proactive, um, that the firm is always moving in a direction that it chooses um, by design, not by um, just happenstance. Uh, you know, you know, we can all be pulled uh, in a lot of different directions, but staying on course because you have a plan and a direction and a goal in mind is is really what a strategic plan does. I honestly, Enoch, think strategic plan sets you free. It sets you free. Um, it's not. It doesn't just help make help you make help an owner make decisions about what they want to do. It helps. Um, make decisions more clear about what you're not going to do. And honestly, that truly is one of the biggest benefits that I see. How does not, or knowing what direction not to go in, how does that help a firm? Well, for example, you know, I work with firms that are um, choosing uh, to potentially enter into a new market. Um, it's great if they choose that by design. Uh, they want to enter into um, the realm of, oh, just pick a specialty area, um, law firm office design. Uh, that means they're going to strategically go after that. So if something comes along um, that takes them in, a, in another direction completely, uh, they have a multi-housing opportunity that may be a certain scale, uh, they'll say no to that. Um, that to me is a real important, that decision not to go in a direction is just as important um, to make as the direction that you're going to go. If you're on a track, getting sidetracked can really take you down a rabbit hole, and that's going to cost um, time uh, in resources, you know, people time, as well as uh, financial resources. Um, it's, it, developing expertise and um, putting it out there uh, that means that you've made a commitment to go into a certain market, and that means, ergo, you can't have door number one, two, and three. Pick one, go with your strengths, <laughs> and um, and I think that's important to do. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, Lisa, and I'm sure you've come across this yeah. as well. There's a firm or a, a sole practitioner, and this person doesn't really have the, or doesn't feel like he or she has the opportunity to turn away projects. That if a project comes in the door, you know, how sure. how can they say no to that? No, I I agree with that. And in in a case like that, I would say, um, you know, if you're, you know, if you're, uh, if the till is low and you have time on your hands, that that particular project that comes in that might not be, you know, in your immediate. Uh, preferred wheelhouse, uh, go for it because that might take you in another direction if you're not, you know, ramped up and you're not operating at capacity. That could really take you in another direction um, that will provide um, a new element into your plan. A strategic plan does not have to be written in stone, and that is a perfect example of it. If um, there is capacity at your firm, no matter what the size, and there is an opportunity that comes through the door that you have not heretofore defined as your um, preferred area of operation, but if the business is there, go for that business and think about how that project can then be leveraged to get another one like it. Um, the point is, is you don't want to be sitting around with capacity. That's that's clear, um, but it also demonstrates the um, reality that a strategic plan has got to be flexible and it's got to respond to the market. Um, and if your market is demonstrating itself as not uh, fulfilling its potential and a new market comes along, that's your opportunity to seize that and, um, and go into a different direction. You know, once you get a project in a certain realm, you can start building on that um, as a new strategic direction. I think that's an extremely um, good example um, uh, to demonstrate the importance of not writing a strategic plan in order for it to guide, um, it to be written in stone, but having the market, um, having it respond to the market realities that your firm is facing. What are the first steps of creating a strategic plan? Uh, 
the first steps in creating a strategic plan would be, you know, A, I would just say really keep it simple and um, include um, a statement of um, what you're all about as a firm. Uh, you call it a mission statement. Um, you know, keep it keep it short and sweet. You know, why are you in business? What are you doing? What do you want to do? Um, and then I would say the next step would be to to list out um, some specific target objectives that you want to be met. Um, have them um, be defined around the areas. Um, you know, the elements of business design, the marketing, um, have an objective in marketing, have an objective in firm operations, have an objective in uh, the professional service offering that you have, and have an objective in finance. Um, and I would suggest also that a strong plan uh, be written with a three-year window in mind. You know, you don't want to go out too much further than that. Um, and then I would um, d uh, define how the business will be built and managed to achieve the vision of the firm. Um, and it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be long, but it, it's a step that um, it's critical that it's done. It's critical that it's looked at from time to time and be and used as a guidepost um, it, it kind of serves as a filter. Okay, call it a design concept. <laughs> View the strategic plan as a design concept. And every decision you make as a designer, you touch back to that design concept in that process of, um, of designing. It's the same thing. Touch back to the strategic plan and, um, you know, it'll, it, you know, it'll tell you if you're on track. Um, have it measurable. Have your goals um, measurable so that you put a time frame on it and uh, and that you um, have a metric in mind. If you're going to um, increase your profitability by 15% um, by the end of fiscal 2014, put that in there. Um, these are the kinds of um, measurements that are part of it. It can't be too ambiguous, you know. Okay. Why – so going – in terms of the strategic plan, you said at the beginning, you know, keep it simple. Why are you in business? What do you want to do? Can you just help me visualize that? Can you give me a couple examples of some answers to those questions that you've heard or that you've helped firms develop? Um, answers to uh, the question of defining. why someone's why someone's in business. Why you know what is it that they want to do? Well, primarily, the the questions around strategic planning that a firm would want to focus on would be uh, what what market areas are uh, is their specialty um, what is the um, what are the growth potent you know what kind of growth potential do they see um, are they looking to grow a firm or are they looking just to have a uh, 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 you know what is what is their all what is their purpose? Are they looking to create uh, an environment which has which provides um, uh, satisfying career paths where they can express their creativity, um, participate in the, um, their community as contributors in architecture? Um, are they looking for um, um, a, a professional practice that has certain attributes? Are they looking for uh, to create a firm that has a partnership track where others are engaged? Um, are they looking for a firm that has a, um, a, a marketing function that allows them to be seen in, you know, specific, uh, specific areas? Uh, uh, the questions around how the firm sees itself um, not how it sees itself today, but how it wants to see itself tomorrow are the um, are these aspects that have to be answered during that initial planning process. Uh, we're not planning for today. We're planning for what we want to see uh, the firm be in the future. When, when a firm gets in a project that may not look like it's heading them down the, the strategic path that they want to go down, Generally, what are the things that they need to be considering and thinking about when they weigh the decision of whether or not to pursue that project? Well, primarily staff resources and whether they have the capacity to uh, produce the work 
And if they don't have the capacity in-house, whether they have the inclination and the outside consultants and network to bring people in to execute the project, I think that's the first thing. You know, do I have the capacity to get this work done, uh, either here or can I, you know, bring in people in order to have that done? Uh, that's probably the first question that an owner would say, you know, do I have time and uh resource to get the work done. That's that's number one. Um, number two would be, of course, the go, no-go question. Is this a project that I want? Um, is this a project that is going to take me where I say I want to go? Do I have choices about, do I have other projects in, on the boards that I'm involved with and will this bring me, you know, is there something about this that will connect me to my ultimate goal and augment uh, my business, or is it something that's going to be a distraction? I think that is, those are the the types of questions that, are, those are the top questions that you would want to ask. Can I get the work done, and is it in my wheelhouse? Excellent. And from your experience, when you see firms that have and that follow by their strategic plan, what are the benefits that you see uh, their firm reaping? The benefits are the the benefits are that they are operating a, a firm by design, and having a firm that's operated by design is better than having one that. Um, uh, that just happens and it grows organically. Not that there's anything wrong with growing organically, but on the other hand, um, there's something much more proactive about taking it where you want it to go as opposed to just having things happen. Uh, you know, people get lucky and great things can just turn up organically and, you know, there's, that's just great. But when you know that you have by design, uh, and that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you, as an architect, can run a rewarding business that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the Join button to claim your free account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, start a new firm, and much more. You'll also get access to my book, Social Media for Architects, where you'll learn how to use Internet tools for fun and for profit. Until next week, this has been The Business of Architecture. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, Do It Anyway.